And then I'm going to ask for the video to get ready. We got it ready. And I will be right back up after this video to lay the groundwork for a series called Faith Factor. Factor in faith, everything changes. I want to start by just some quotes about faith, some people that you probably have heard of. Plato says, we are twice armed if we fight with faith. Victor Hugo says, a faith is a necessity to a man. Woe to him if he believes in nothing. Tertullian says, you can judge the quality of one's faith by the way they behave. Rose Kennedy says, I have come to the conclusion that the most important element in human life is faith. Faith is a big deal. But the question is, what is faith and how does it work? And so clearly, if one has faith, it's going to impact what they do or what they don't do. If you have faith, it is a factor in how you live. It determines what you do. It impacts what you value. It impacts what you commit to. It changes what you fight for if you have faith. And as the theme of this series is, when you factor in faith, everything changes. Christ understood the importance of faith so much that one of the primary things that he came to do was to establish each and every one of us on the foundation of faith. Why? Because he understood that when a person has faith, impossible things become possible. Amen? When you believe and do not doubt anything is possible. That is actually the words of Jesus himself. So I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Can I have that other microphone?
Chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now notice verse 2. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. It is also known as the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, our Easter message, endured the cross, despised the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In the book of Hebrews, we find a theme that the writer gives to the readers that I want to share with you today, and that is Christ is better. Christ is better. All right, one more time. Look at your neighbor and say, Christ is better. There's an author, Merrill Tinney, who says the entire theme of the book of Hebrews is built around the word better. In the scriptures, we find out that our God is better. You've heard the statement that says, my daddy can beat up your daddy. We have a daddy that no one else can compare to. Amen? Our Christ is better. He is better than any other gods. He is better than any other religions. No other god, statue, idol, temple, nothing else can compare to our God. He's better than any other religious system. He's a better covenant. The old covenant had to be upgraded. Let me say it that way. But we found that he is a better covenant. What was wrong with the old covenant? Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7, tells you what the problem... There was actually nothing wrong with the old covenant. Except one thing. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7 says... For if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for another, but God found fault with... Wait, wait, we're not showing that one. I guess I didn't give that to them. But God found fault with the people. Look at your neighbor and say, it's your fault. I set you up for that one, didn't I? Right? Didn't that feel good just telling somebody it's your fault? Y'all been wanting to say that all day. It's your fault. And so Jesus looked and he saw something that was a problem. It was nothing that had been put in place, no solution, no program, no system. Nothing could solve our problem except one thing. And Jesus came to change us forever. Romans chapter verse Chapter 5, verse 8 says that even while you were yet sinners, Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says that when there was no one righteous, Isaiah 64, verse 6 says that our righteousness was as filthy rags. So it doesn't matter how good you can make yourself. It doesn't matter what you have done or haven't done. There's nothing in and of yourself that will ever qualify you to be accepted by God. And Jesus understood this. And the scripture says literally that God looked and saw that there was no one. Buddha couldn't do it. Right? No other God. Allah could not do it. No other religious system, no other name, no other solution, no other government, no other political system. Science and knowledge could not fix our problem. Education and educators can't fix our problem. There was only one thing, and that was Christ is better than anything else that you could ever put your trust in. He is better than legalism and strict rules. I grew up in that kind of system. I don't know about you. I got saved at every youth camp. I'm on the record a lot of times. The numbers are elevated because of Tony Colson. 
I literally, and this is no joke, literally believed I lost my salvation every time I sinned. I really elevated some church membership roles. I'd get saved every time. But it's because I had put my trust in the wrong thing. Oftentimes, we even put our trust in people and pastors and preachers, and then they disappoint us, and we lose our faith. We look at our world, and we look at our finances, and we look at our bosses, and we look at our situations, and we lose our faith. And it's because we have not learned where to put our faith. Jesus is the better solution. Acts chapter 4, and I know some of you may have gotten mad at me. Some of you watching online may not right now say he's, he's too exclusive, that, that Christianity's not the only way, that there's other religion. As long as you find peace with your way. But Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, There is no other name whereby we must be saved. What made Jesus different? Number one, he was sinless. And number two, he was the only one that went into a grave and got up out of the grave by the power of Jesus Christ and never will return to that grave. And whenever we begin to put our trust, our faith, our belief in the power of Jesus, then anything becomes possible. Look at your neighbor and say, Christ is better. So the question today is, is where is your faith? Is your faith in your health? Is your faith in your job? Is your faith in me? Is your faith in a relationship? Throw me a a ball up here, because some of us struggle with this. Now, I could have called it from further back. He, he come up here and handed it to me real gently. He didn't have a lot of faith in me. Yeah. Some of us put our faith in sports or our hobbies or our skills or our gifts, and we think... So much so that we value, we put our time, we put our efforts, we put our investments, we put everything into this. And this ball is even deflated. And the reality is, is when we put our trust and our faith into earthly systems, they will never last. They will never be able to... Endure the test of times. The dynasty will always fall. Alabama will not always be. Tennessee's coming back. (laughs) South Carolina's coming. I had to add it in there for you. He's saying Florida. Florida. Go ahead, on the count of three, just to help you out. Everybody say your team. One, two, three. Don't put your faith in that earthly expression. We can't put our trust in what the world has said is what makes us valuable, what makes us find a solution in those things, whether it's a boss, whether it's a dollar bill, whether it's a skill, whether it's a talent, whether it's some kind of activity or investment that is based on this earth, may I say to you that this is only a trial run, that this is only temporary, that this earthly expression is not where you need to put your hope. Christ and Him crucified is the better hope. Matthew chapter 7, and I'm closing. Verse 24, Jesus came, and probably if you're reading a Bible with with red letters, this will be in red. Because this is Jesus speaking. 
Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was its fall. Jesus came teaching the truth that sets us free. He came presenting to us the answer to life. And he came and proved that answer whenever he went to the cross and he died and was buried and rose again. And he says that if you'll put your trust in my words, that when the storm comes, and it will come, you will be attacked. You will be pressed against. You will go through difficult seasons. You will Go through sickness and disease. You will lose your job. You will face things that you don't understand. And I'm here right now as a testimony to say, everything in my life I don't understand. And even in preparation for this message, I did not feel qualified. And God said to me, don't preach Tony. Preach Jesus and Him crucified because He is the better solution. And when you can't figure it out and when they don't show up for you and when things fall apart, put your trust in Jesus. He is the better solution. Because there will be a storm that will come. There will be winds that will blow and beat against your house. So my question today is, where is your faith? What have you put your trust in? Have you put it in your job? Have you put it in sports? Have you put it in a person? Or is it truly... In Christ. Final verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on that foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or straw, Each one's work will become manifest, and that day will disclose it. Now, hear the message. Probably everybody in this room today, I don't know everyone, but most of you have accepted Jesus Christ. And there's no other foundation really that exists in all of life. There is nothing else that you can truly put your faith in that is sure, that is eternal. That is forever. But oftentimes when we go through life, we begin to put our trust in other things. We begin to build our life with materials that will not stand. And notice what it says. It says that day will reveal it. That day that all of us will face one day. Regardless of whether you believe it or not, regardless of whether you trust me or not, there is coming a day when there will be a reckoning. It is called the day of judgment, and it will reveal where everyone's faith has been put. It will reveal what you built your life on. And it says this, it says that it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If anyone has built on the foundation survives, if anything that he's built on the foundation survives, he will get a reward. But if what you have built burns up, you will suffer loss. Though you yourself will be saved. 
but only as through fire. Now here's my goal as a pastor. Number one, yes, I want you to be saved. But I don't want you to be like the ones who just barely make it. Right? It says, as though through fire. Like you just get in and they're looking at you like you went through it, didn't you? Like where's the rest of you? What else did you bring with you? You say, well, that, that's not really going to be a part of the equation, is it, Pastor? Yes. There's going to be two judgments. One's going to be a judgment of where your faith was placed. And then there will be a judgment of your works. You can look at that later. Send me an email. But I don't want you to just barely make it in. I want your life to be built on faith. And if we're not careful in this world in which we live right now, we can get very confused on what to build our life on. We can become very confused on what's valuable. And so as your pastor, I'll, I will say things to you that you don't like. But you know, the Bible says that in the last days there will be itching ears to only listen to what you want to hear. But I want to speak to you as a church icon that you cannot give your life to just itching ears and you cannot give your life to just listening to the things that speak and build you up because ultimately there's going to be a storm and there's going to be a fire and there's going to be a time when you're going to be tested and only the faith in Jesus shall stand. And so I don't apologize because I want you to enter into heaven rewarded. So that whenever he looks at you, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. Stand with me this morning. I would only ask one question today as Aaron is coming to close us out. Is there anyone in this building that you would say, Pastor, if I left today and if I died on my way home, I don't know if I would be a Christian. I want to give you an opportunity to settle that on an eternal security, on an eternal foundation of Christ and Christ alone. And so if there's anyone in this building and say, Pastor, I'm not sure, but I want to make it right today, you would just lift up your hand. And, and where you are, just lift up your hand. I want to pray for you right where you are. You don't have to come forward. We don't have to do that. It has to work in your heart. Anybody in this room that would say, that's me. I, if I left today, I'm not sure if I would be saved. You would raise your hand and say, that's me this morning. Be bold. Be strong. Listen, this is more important than anything else that you put your trust in. There may be somebody online that you are hearing this message for the very first time and you want to make things right with God, you want to settle your faith in Him, I want you to pray this prayer with me, and we as a congregation will pray this prayer. And then I want you to write the word saved in the comments, and our team will contact you. Father, we come before you right now, and we declare that, God, that you would bring peace to those that are out of relationship to you right now in Jesus' name. Would you pray this prayer with me? If you're online and you're praying this for the very first time, say, Father God, Forgive me of all my sins. I need peace in my heart. And today, I put my trust in the one who is better, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. God bless you. Come on up, Aaron. Stay standing. We're on.